Hi guys, welcome to a new video. I think it's time to tell you some tips I learned from building my aviaries. I've built this aviary roughly two years ago. I learned a lot from building this aviary, my first aviary at my parents house and looking at other aviary builds. So in this video I will give you guys some tips on what you should know before you start building an aviary and I hope you can learn from my ideas but also from my mistakes. I will leave a link in the description where you can check out my aviary build or click in the right corner. I will roughly go through some general tips so you can build a perfect aviary. Tip 1. Plan ahead. Before you start building, plan ahead and let your ideas sink in. I planned my whole aviary for weeks, making sure it would be on the right place, taking into account weather, neighbors, visibility and more but also the size of the aviary. Of course, bigger is better. However, does it fit in your garden? And for example, are there any legislations you need to take into account or something else? Can your birds survive the winter inside the aviary or do you need a heated indoor area for your bird? And last, of course, which species of birds do you want? Different species of birds need different requirements like material, size, height, indoor areas, etc. A good plan will help to make the perfect aviary. After finishing your plan, put it aside for a couple of weeks. Maybe afterwards you have changed your mind, thought of something new and want to change something. Now it's still easy to change it. Tip 2. A double door system. You definitely need a double door system. This means you need to go through two doors before you reach your burps. This prevents any birds from escaping and I know this takes away a little bit of space which some people just don't have but trust me even though you can be so careful the birds will just find a way to slip by and you will be devastated. Especially bringing big objects into your aviary will be a lot easier with a double door system. It can also function as a storage space for your food and other stuff. Some alternatives can be a screen door which is used to keep flies out of your home or these plastic strips used used to keep animals in specific parts. But if possible, I would choose for a double door system to be 100% safe. Tip 3. Easy accessibility. This is also a big plus when you have an aviary and has a link to tip 1. Plan ahead. Make sure that everything is easily accessible. For example, water, food and nesting materials are all inside my double door system. If I'm in my aviary, I've got everything at hand. I can access my indoor part also in two ways. For feeding purposes, I only have to use the lower part, which decreases the chance that birds will escape. And when I clean, I can open up the whole indoor part. Talking about cleaning, don't make a lot of corners and nooks and crannies. This will make cleaning much more difficult. When you have a large aviary, make sure you have a walkthrough to access everything. In my case, I have a waterfall. For easy access, I made my water reservoir accessible via the outside of my aviary, so I can clean it quick and easy. This makes life much easier and more time to enjoy your birds. Plus, you will do it more often because it takes less time. Tip 4. A guard dog. This little girl has just joined our family. Her name is Aya and she has her own YouTube channel called Big Furry Adventures. It was not the reason why we took her in, but since her arrival the amount of cats and birds dropping by in our garden decreased drastically. And yes, her presence did stress out the birds at first, but we introduced her slowly and they are getting to know her. She's not targeting the aviary like the cats and the birds. The birds are far more relaxed now, so it does work. If you like my bird videos, definitely check out her channel. Link in the description or in the right corner. You will love her videos and I would appreciate if you could subscribe to her channel as well. She doesn't have much fans yet, but with your help maybe we can grow her channel a bit. Back to the aviary. Tip 5. Flooring and plants. For flooring there are some mixed opinions. I definitely prefer a layer of sand on a concrete layer. The sand soaks up all the droppings, it dries quick after some rain and it's easy and cheap to clean. Also here I made sure the shuffle can reach everything very easy. 
but most plants can grow on sand, so I made an elevated part for the plants. Underneath the dirt are tiles. You can also just leave a part of the aviary open with no concrete, but I would prefer a concrete layer so no rodents or something can get in, bringing you any diseases. I use tiles because I rent this place and I'm not allowed to pour concrete in my garden. Instead of concrete, you can also put a layer of mesh underneath your dirt. But make sure the walls also go into the ground a couple of feet deep and make sure your mesh is small enough. A 12mm by 12mm mesh will not stop a mouse, so maybe you have to put two layers on top of each other. I regret I didn't do this because there is a good chance the rodents can still get through the crannies of the tiles if they want to. Which plant to use depends on the species you want, but always check on the internet which species are not toxic. A lot of plants can be toxic for birds, so don't just plant anything. Most parrot or parakeet species will not leave a single plant alive. Only if the size of your aviary and of your aviary plants is big enough, they have a chance of survival. For finches, it's different. I used conifers. They are sturdy plants, so you get them in a lot of different shapes and sizes. The same applies to grass species. But avoid the very soft species of plants, because the birds will destroy them in no time especially in the breeding season. I also use plants at the outside of my aviary. Again, make sure these are safe as well. This beech hedge makes a nice green wall for my aviary by just putting mesh in front of it instead of wood. Tip 6. The roof. As a roof, I used semi transparent plastic sheets. This will get light through so you can see your birds, but this also depends on the placement and climate you live in. Here it's not very hot, so the aviary will not heat up that quickly. I can imagine that if you live in a very hot climate, you would prefer a roofing which keeps the light and therefore the heat out. But for this climate it works perfect. I can see my birds better and the indoor part of the aviary still has daylight. At the same time, this part is protected from the rain and wind. At my previous aviary, the indoor part was a lot darker and the birds didn't use it. I do have a mesh layer underneath the roofing because it's not super sturdy. This mesh will prevent the birds from escaping if the roofing cracks or breaks off. A part of the outside area of my aviary is covered and a part is open. The birds love to shower during a summer rainstorm in the open part. However, make sure the covered part is big enough so all the birds can hide there when it's getting really wet. My covered part is a bit too small, so during heavy rain days I have to put some plastic on top of it. Next time I will make the roof a little bigger. For the open part I have a double mesh layer with some room in between. This makes sure that other animals can't grab the birds by sticking their paws through the mesh. Tip 7. A cleaning crew. They are not only very adorable, they are also very useful. I'm talking about quails. I always have had quails in my aviary. I love them, but they help me also clean up a lot of the seeds which are on the ground. They do have their own food, but they still prefer to forage around and clean up all the scattered seeds. This prevents the seeds from molding and helps to keep the aviary green altogether. As a bonus, it's wonderful to see them running around the aviary. If you do have quails, it's good to have a protective layer around the bottom of your aviary. In this case I used carpet tiles but I still have to change it to plastic sheets or something. They are really skittish and this helps them to feel more covered, especially with our new pup walking or running alongside the aviary. Tip 8. Black mesh. The last tip I have is painting your mesh black. As you can see it's far more easier to look through than to look through metal mesh. You can see the difference immediately. You can see your birds much better and from a greater distance. I use black metal paint and after two years it still looks pretty good. Recently I patched up some parts where the paint was getting off. You can also buy black mesh, however don't take the mesh with a black plastic layer. This makes the mesh thicker and less see through, which is the opposite of what you want. That were all the tips for now. Hope you learned something to make your aviary perfect. Comment below which tip you definitely are going to use, or if you have any other tips, let's learn from all our ideas and mistakes. If you like this video, click the like button so more people can find this video. And I would appreciate it if you check out my other videos and press the subscribe button so you can follow me on my journey in bird keeping.
And don't forget to check out Aya's YouTube channel Big Furry Adventures. Thanks for watching and don't forget, stay happy and always love your birds. Bye bye!